Good morning everybody. It has been a night full with results and games. So let's quickly recap. Uh, first off, I'm wearing Uruguay who didn't play. I just decided it fits best with how I want to be today. It is sunny outside, so I have the sun on me. No other reason for that. And I like this shirt a lot, so there you go. Well, um, let's go through the games. The big one, of course, was Spain, Croatia. I again only saw highlights of that one. It was not the game I was watching. Um, and yeah, seemingly for about 20, 20 minutes it was an even game, even Croatia having chances. Then Saul makes it 1 nothing. Quickly thereafter, sends you 2 nothing. And within 10 minutes, it was 3 nothing for Spain just before the halftime. And yeah, uh, all great goals, I have to say. And from there, I think there was no recovery for Croatia. Um, uh, it was 4 nothing shortly after the half. I think Ramos made it 5 nothing, And Isco, also great move, 6 nothing. A result that I think no one saw coming. Uh, I was aware that Croatia will not be the, as strong of a squad anymore. A, they had this long season with going to the World Cup final and most of the players playing, you know, no, 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 no most, most of the players, but you know, uh, it was a long season for the uh, good players, but more importantly, um, Mandzukic is not there anymore, so there's some edge missing in attack. Um, Subasic also, Kubasic, whoever, I know one is a Schoen, one is a Su, uh, retired, so you have a kind of your talisman goalkeeper missing, although he, not that, I think overall no, no one says he, he's this absolute, absolute top keeper, but you know, he, he was the hero of, of at least one of the two penalty shooters that they won, and yeah, there you go. Uh, again, I didn't see this coming. I saw Spain winning this one. Uh, I, I thought that this will not, no, not, not be a super competitive match. Uh, uh, but that it's 6 nothing. Uh, that is just out of the blue, honestly. So, yeah. Um, Jersey matchup, let's talk about that. It was interesting to see uh, Spain, of course, in the home kit. Um, I wish that the pants were a little bit more... Uh, blue and not steely blue um, just because this is the classic Spain look uh, with the black pants I guess they wanna, wanted the pattern that was navy connects up with the pants uh, personal feeling they should have then done it in such a way that uh, also the pants are navy and match up with the socks um, just I think this would make for a better look in that case um, Although I like the regular Spain look with the red shorts, blue pants and black socks. I think that's, um, it's a little bit out of left field, but I think it's a nice look overall. So, um, there you go. And Croatia played, of course, with their horrible home shirts, but in a way, <laughs> they found the best combination by pairing it with the white uh, pants. And actually, I like, from a distance it looked good. I still don't like the jerseys because I still think that the two colors and then the red, it just, there's just something not connecting with me. But from a distance, it actually looked all right-ish. If it was a pure navy blue shirt, it would be a, I think it would be uh, better. If it was, of course, in the royal blue that they usually wear, and maybe that with navy, that could look nice. But the navy blue with the black, I just don't like. I just, I keep repeating myself, I just, dislike this jersey with a vengeance really uh, but it was clear that we're gonna see that that one because Croatia is not gonna play in their checkout kits and of course we didn't get the answer uh, at least I have to look closer I wonder if the checkers were also on the back or not um, but I guess for the dark kit it doesn't matter that much so. Yep, the other game was also another one that I think ahead of uh, this Nations League play I thought this might be a tight one 
Iceland against Belgium, but as soon as Belgium got the penalty, uh, there was only one winner. And yeah, Iceland lost for the first time at home in uh, four years, something like that. So yeah, also brothers. Not surprising after they got kicked by Switzerland, but uh, a week ago, Belgium winning 3 0 in Iceland would have been a surprise to me, honestly. So I would not have predicted that result. Let's go in the other lane here because it's getting crazy. Uh, yeah, so we have Belgium and Switzerland ahead in that group. Uh, Spain, of course, has now full control of Group A1. And Switzerland, thanks to the goal differential, I think Iceland will be the team relegated here. That's a pretty safe bet to say, because even if they win their remaining two games, uh, their goal differential is so horrid that I just don't see it, that how they can... Yeah. Well, the others have only three points. Well, lots of games to be played, but uh, it clearly seems that Iceland is the team that comes down. And then we go to League B, where I watched my home country uh, in a flat performance for the ages. Yes, they had in Bosnia, they had most of the ball for 25 minutes actually, they played quite well. But the one thing that really already ticked me off is that Arnautovic, who has been amazing over the past two years, so I don't want to knock him too much. Arnautovic in the national team was the best player, Barnum. Uh, last year, this year also. But he seemingly got his uh, footwork wrong because he was he didn't have a stable footing on the ground. And our left side, which is actually our forte with Arnautovic and Alaba, uh, seemingly didn't get going. And uh, uh, but you know they were pressing high. They tried a few things, created half chances, but it was always, you could see that it, it's not quite gelling. And then starting for the 10th, 20th, 25th, uh, Bosnia war, had two really uh, great chances where just near misses. If uh, Jaco and I think it was a defender could connect on the crosses that came in, uh, I could have been one if, if not two nothing at halftime. So, that was kind of a um, wake-up call, but no one woke up, um, not even me, because the first 50 minutes of the, of the second half, I was just flat asleep. Uh, a, I was tired, but B, the game, to me, seemed to head to a 0-0. Um, Austria scored a goal that was disallowed very quickly, rightfully so, unfortunately. Ah, unfortunately, I mean, we want to get the right goals. So the goal was disallowed, uh, and I thought maybe this is the stuff that now they made, they kind of connected, they saw that they could get something going, maybe something's happening. No, uh, in midfield are now which of all players. And again, he has been sensational for Austria uh, as of late, so uh, he's allowed his one flat performance. But um, it's kind of telling if the player that has been carrying you is not performing, then the whole uh, team is also not, not performing. It was the first time that he was a team captain from the beginning. And as far as I know, he has a Bosnian mother or something. He has some relations there. So yeah, this was... He got booed by the crowd, I guess, because he chose to play for Austria, not for uh, Bosnia. So yeah, maybe the nerves were also playing a little bit. I don't know. But anyway, yeah. He loses the ball, quick counter-attack, and Jaco puts it in the corner. Uh, it didn't seem an unstoppable shot, to be honest, to me as well. Um, but you know, we, our current goalkeepers also. Uh, Austria usually had really good goalkeepers. Uh, I think the current crop is a little bit shaky, I've got to say. So yeah. And then there was nothing coming. I mean, we had one chance similar to the chances that Bosnia had in the first half where well, Luis Schaub just couldn't connect with the ball. Uh, was hard to take him as a hard crossing but overall there were many instances where Austria should you know there was an attack and in either the ball was passed into the back of the attacker or 
the ball uh, was played too far or you didn't see a better position with teammate, you shot from far away. Uh, just disappointing. And it was almost as I feared. Um, you had a great year so far with, I think, six wins and only one loss to Brazil. There, uh, They didn't play that great, but you know, uh, overall form definitely great, but that also tells you friendly don't count squad. And maybe it's a little bit also on the scheduling of these friendlies because playing in Bosnia uh, was never gonna be that easy and scheduling then friendlies against Sweden and uh, uh, Denmark is coming up next seems odd to me. Frankly it is odd. So um, they don't play like none of these plays like yeah, of course, that's the ones that they won. So I'm quite disappointed. I think this game was really headed for a 0 0. I think Bosnia uh, also didn't do much. And my joke that I made uh, three days ago that it was Bosnia who had substance but no effort, and um, Northern Ireland had all effort but no substance, and Austria had no substance and no effort. And Exactly, this is what came true. Uh, I think we still have a good crop of players at the moment, but it's not a team yet. And if your best players are not showing up, you're falling flat. And it's not that Robert Borosinevsky, I really feel it. This is not the tactics by the Bosnians that uh, undid them. It was just sloppy play, absolutely sloppy play, because you controlled the game and couldn't get it done. So yeah, that was a disappointment. Um, was there another? Uh, uh, yeah, the Jersey matchup was also interesting. Uh, that uh, Austria didn't play in their whites, but in the red. So, but you know, the Bosnia shirt with the yellow on the side, I actually liked a bit better than when I saw it um, in the video. Um, again, I wish that this stripe, you know, make it. Easy. If it was yellow and maybe the blue was a little bit more towards the flag, I think it could really be a nice one. And I think if this sash had stars in it, you know, look at the Bosnian flag. There is something there. There is a great jersey in there. Uh, so yeah, jersey matchup overall okay. I think I like it even better when uh, the Austrian played in red. Uh, white in that case because I love blue against red matchups. Um, also for uh, Belgium against Iceland. Uh, similar story that Iceland uh, played in the blues and Belgium played in all yellow which was an interesting look I have to I have to admit but I think it didn't look bad. Um, I get that Belgium was not playing in their red um, simply because the, yeah, there's a lot of some glare. Um, because Iceland has a little bit red on their shirts, so yeah. Uh, but I think a blue ever against red match was also possible. Now, uh, I don't think there was another League B game, unless I'm totally mistaken, but I think uh, League B. So we go straight to League C, where the matchup, that the big matchup, of course. I'm not looking at camera because the lights here in Austria are hung idiotically. They are, you know, I'm first line and they are right above me. In America, they were behind the crossing, so you never had to do anything like this. But yeah, indulge me here. Uh, the, the big matchup was Hungary against Greece, but of course, um, it was already a little bit uh, dull because Hungary also received a ban on. Uh, fans in the stadium, so it was an empty stadium because of, uh, I guess, racist chance in a game against Romania or maybe even some rioting. Hungary Romania is not a pretty matchup. Uh, Hungarians are still bitter that, um, you know, most of what's now Romania used to be Hungary. Um, that was a huge, uh, huge downsizing. Just historically, Hungary lost, I think, 70% of its territory after World War One. So, yeah. But not gonna go into that one. Uh, too much Hungary was playing, of course, Greece, and I expected actually Greece to win that one. Um, Hungary got an early le uh, lead. Greece uh, quickly threw Manolas, equalized. Yeah, we have green. 
so it was 1-1 one, one, and Kleinheisler just before the half made it 2-1 with a beautiful shot and from what I could tell from the highlights it was actually a lively game despite the, the lack of atmosphere uh, completely different to the Ukraine Slovakia matchup where uh, the game just matched the atmosphere. Yeah. yeah. So and Greece had their chances again. Only saw highlights, uh, so I cannot say much about the match flow. But uh, from what I could gather from the highlights, Greece had their two three chances uh, where they probably should have made it uh, two two and would probably have been a deserved draw. So, but now with uh, Finland winning also home against Estonia and I was a little bit surprised that Finland got two home games in a row but yep Finland sits on six points in this group uh, Hungary and Greece on three and I guess this win for Hungary uh, could prove a big one but th that group is open I think this is uh, not only is it very interesting from um, um, country point of view because all these countries speak languages that are neither uh, Slavic nor Germanic nor uh, Romance languages uh, but I think the group in, 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 in it itself is interesting when Greece should be on the way back slowly <laughs> oh, of course I get the driving student ahead of me I, I get it this girl is learning to drive, so it's it's not that easy. Uh, Greece should be on the way up. Hungary, I think, is still a little bit feeding from the great Euro 16. I mean, I'm still not over that one. Hungary was supposed to be the weak, weakest team in Austria, similar to what happened yesterday. Uh, it's classic Austria. You have one great showing, and then when it really counts, pff, all the areas. And yeah, but you know, gotta give it to the Hungarians. Uh, they play the great Euro, and they have a decent. They have a decent team, I gotta say. So yeah, uh, it's not that surprising that they win against Greece, but I think Greece has the better talent. But uh, for me, also that Greece, uh, you know, the Dutch fall was maybe the most surprising story, but that Greece completely vanished after uh, the 2014 World but look, I was also a little bit buzz buzzing to me because Greece honestly uh, was a European power early in the 2010s. Uh, qualified for big tournaments, regular showings. Um, I really thought they have it together and then poof, suddenly they're gone. A little bit of a mystery to me. Yeah, so I think that was all the matchups. Uh, yeah, I actually liked Greece in white and um, in white and blue. It looked okay. It looked nice, and also also with the uh, with Hungary playing in the classic. I mean, the Hungary kit. This is well, this is such a classic kit that you should see more of uh, in soccer. I mean, they really take the flag like the French did. Ah, that actually gets me. To another point, I finally saw the Scotland Albania highlights. I like the Scotland uh, kit. I mean, the navy jerseys, of course, but then with the white pants and the red socks. Um, Frost should play like that. Really like that one as well. And I think, yeah, Israel. Now Israel lost only a friendly, so yeah, that was that. Uh, I didn't see League D. I, 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 I apologize, but I didn't have to. Well, let me know which games you saw. I guess there was a high potential. If you're from one of the losing teams that you're frustrated like I am uh, today, because I think all the victories, I don't know about Hungary against Greece, but maybe there you feel this disappointed if you're a Greek fan, that uh, you couldn't get the equalizer against the Hungary squad. You probably should have gotten the result in an empty stadium. But yeah, it was not my night, uh, for sure. Uh, I don't regret choosing Austria, but I was really so close to switching uh, to another game. But you know, I already—it was kind of—I invested already so much time in this dull game. 
I gotta see to the end. <laughs> Stupid me. And I saw, the, I already saw at halftime that Spain, I saw the highlights of Spain, Croatia, that it was already 3 nothing. So there was no way I'm gonna switch over to that one. And um, I was thinking about Hungary against Greece, but when I saw the empty crowds there, I don't, didn't wanna watch that one either. Empty crowd games in front of uh, an empty stadium, which is not fun. Well, again, let me know which games you saw, but whether you agree with my assessment of the games that I described here. Uh, of course, right here. Of course, give me a thumbs up if you like this video and subscribe to my channel if you want to see more of this. I will talk to you soon. Bye. If you enjoyed this video, please hit like and subscribe to my channel. If you've already done so, I would like to thank you for your support. It is very much appreciated. Also, check out the accompanying blog at the link provided in the description below and at the end of this video. Thank you for watching and until next time.